All right, hey, Miss Watt, how are you? Hey, Mr. Z, how are you? Doing real good. Good. Talking about rivers again. Huh? Oh, yeah. All right, so we've got uh, three learning targets here for you. Please review those. Assess yourself on those, and don't forget to come back to them at the end of the video. And we're going to go on and talk about some depositional and erosional features of rivers. Yep. Now, there are lots of them. Go ahead and think oh, okay. of it. There are lots of them. We're just going to talk about a few, right? Yeah, and we're going to do a lot of stuff in class and bring a lot of these back and actually get hands-on experience working with them when we get to the stream table. Yeah. So a lot of cool stuff coming up. So we'll just kind of go through what a few of them are and talk about how they form mm -hmm. as, a, as a preview. Yeah. So we have two terms, erosion and abrasion, and we already have talked a lot about the term erosion. Yeah, yeah, we have. So we talked about erosion when we talked about uh, sedimentary rocks and sedimentary environment, and that's just the transporting of sediment, and rivers do a really good job of that. And we actually talked about abrasion, too, back in physical weathering, where we're actually, like, hitting rocks together and breaking them apart. Mm -hmm. So right. we're talking about erosion and abrasion. We're talking about moving both sediment and breaking off existing rock material yeah. and eroding rock exactly. surfaces. So we get some things like we get these curves in yeah. the river, right? Yeah, we do. We get these what's called meanders, and there's unique features going on on either side of these features, and we'll get into that in just the next couple of slides here. Okay. So here's a little more on abrasion, and we get some features that are called potholes, Yeah. and those happen by scouring. Yeah. So sometimes, actually we saw this at Camp Sagawa. We did. After we went down the stairway into the canyon. Yeah, we in did. The, in the floor of the stream that we were mm -hmm. walking through in the canyon, where there were those circular holes. Yeah. And those were the potholes. Yeah, and I think, well, I, I, I know how it happens, but I think that's under debate right now, isn't it? How we got those huge potholes. Well, before it would, used to be thought that there was a, a smaller rock in kind of like an eddy, like a little uh, whirlpool yeah. that was just kind of going around in circles. And over time, it would just kind of grind out that hole. And that little rock they would call a, a grinder um, that over time would eventually just make these, uh, these holes. But I think that's under debate, though, isn't it? I think it? it is. But that's kind of what's shown here in the yeah. picture. And a lot of people still talk about that. So we can think about that process as yeah. the process that forms potholes through scouring out exactly. in an eddy current. Mm -hmm. and so that's one of the types of erosional features. Yep. Correct. Okay. All right, so now we're getting back to the meander or these curves that are inside the river itself. And if we talk about the water flowing and going around this curve, the speed of the water is going to change. It's not going to be the same or the velocity of the water itself. And if we take a look at this area, Right over there, we're going to call that the cut bank. And if you notice the size of these arrows, I think they're telling us the speed of the water. And the larger the arrow here, the faster the water is moving. Right? So if we, kinda, if we have this water that's going around this curve at a faster rate, it's actually going to start taking sediment from that side of the river. So Mr. Z, you got little kids. Do they I still do. play that game called Crack the Whip? No. No? They don't. Oh, Mr. Baldwin's over there laughing because he's played it in hockey, I bet you. <laughs> so if you have one person who sort of stands in the middle and then you have a row of people and they're all linking arms or holding yeah. hands or something, the person who's in the middle could just spin on that spot, but the people on the outside of that group to get around yeah. have to go really, really fast. Sure, sure. And it's the same idea here. The water that's on the outside of the curve has to go really, really fast mm -hmm. compared to the water that's on the inside of the curve. And the water going faster means that it has greater erosional power, Got right? It. More force behind it, it so does, it can erode yeah. away the outside edge and cut a bank. So in the bottom right corner, you can see that house that apparently was built on the outside of a meander, and uh, they now have a cut bank underneath their foundation, it looks like. Yeah, so it does. Well, it was, it was on solid land It was at one point in time, and now the river has scoured that side of the river. and. Um, taken that land away. It has. Okay. So that's cut bank. And oh. then on the inside of the meander, where mm -hmm. the velocity of the river is very slow, it may be slow enough that some of that sediment that's been carried downstream is actually going to be deposited. So that's what we see here in, in this picture, right? Yeah. And they actually happen opposite of each other, right? So on the one side, we have the cut bank that we talked about on the first uh, last slide. And then opposite of that, we have the point bar. Again, just kind of thinking about that crack the whip game where we're kind of moving along. That person that's in the middle or close to it doesn't have to move very far or move very fast. So the outside of the meander, the outside of the curve, 
would have the cut bank, mm -hmm. and then the inside of the curve would typically have the point bar. a point bar deposit. Yeah. Good. So here are a couple of nice pictures. Uh, the, the bottom right picture is kind of a synthetic satellite picture, but you can see the pattern of lots yeah. of those streams meandering back and forth. So you see the cut banks on the outsides of the meanders probably there and the meander yeah. pattern or the curving pattern, the sinuosity yeah. of that, those streams. That yeah. stream. And that process is ongoing, it's continuous, and the river is really dynamic, it changes all the time, and those meanders are gonna to begin to grow as we're depositing sediment on the point bar and then eroding sediment away on the cut bank. So um, in the last slide, when you looked at that picture, those curves looked kind of like kind of easy, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. But if we look down at this picture on the right, they're they seem to be taking pretty aggressive turns there. Yeah, and that's what's going to eventually form things like Oxbow Lakes that we're mm -hmm. going to start to take a look at here. So we're talking about rivers, but yep. now we're going to say that rivers sometimes form these things called Oxbow Lakes, yeah. right? So if we take a look at, um, at this river in this picture, which is a really cool picture, um, we can Ooh. see um, the meandering of the stream. And you can um, hopefully identify the outside of a curve over here, which would be the cut bank where erosion is taking place, and the inside of a curve over here where the point bar would be, and we're having deposition taking place, right? Yeah. Now, if we notice, like, right back here, and that might be a little too difficult to see. I hope not. Um, but right over here, we can probably see erosion taking place in this area, right, because it's along this cut bank that's right there. Well, what, what do you think is going to happen over time if more and more time passes with the little piece of land that's right there? Well, I think especially if there's a little bit of a flood, yeah. that area is going to be underwater, and you're going to have erosion that's going to just want to come straight down there sure. instead of going around that longer curve. Yeah, because right? water wants to take that easiest path. Take the shortest path and, and the steepest path. And we see this animation down here at the bottom where we see this, this meander itself, and then eventually over time, we actually see it kind of break through over here and then just continue flowing down the river and not want to go around this entire meander. Eventually we have deposition that takes place that isolates that body of water with the rest of the river and that becomes an oxbow lake. So a meander gets cut off mm -hmm. and that cut off old meander forms that oxbow lake, yeah. kind of horseshoe shaped lake. Yeah. Okay. And if we looked at Google Images of the Mississippi River, especially down in Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, very commonplace. Mm -hmm. We see them all over the place. Yeah. And here's just another diagram showing kind of the sediment deposition that occurs, mm -hmm. the point bars, the cut banks, and the deposition along that process yeah. of the formation. And of it Oxford. really shows really well just the evolution of the meander and how we start off like relatively straight. I mean, a slight curve here, mm -hmm. but then over time we see this kind of building of the meander, the sediment, the erosion on the cut bank and the point bar. Really good illustration. So, there. people who are buying land along a major river, like the Mississippi or some of its tributaries, mm -hmm. shouldn't count on that land staying the way it is for generations, right? I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Another type of feature, and this is going to be a depositional feature. It is, yeah. Okay. So, we were talking about erosional deposition. I don't think we said oxbow lakes are erosional features. Yeah. Okay. So right. this river delta, which we've already talked about a little bit, we talked about sedimentary rocks, is a yeah. depositional feature. It is. How do those form? Well, you know what? If we think back to uh, the last video segment and we talked about the sediment loads and all this stuff that the river is carrying, uh, once that river ends up reaching its um, its endpoint, right? Uh, and in this case, if we looked at this as, uh, as the Mississippi River, which is right here, it, it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, think of the water within the river as being channeled and it's moving. But then once we get to an open body of water and it's not channeled anymore, its velocity and its force dramatically drop off. And when that happens, just like we see in like the point bar, that if the velocity is reduced, then it's... It's, um, sediment load. its sediment load gets deposited. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the shape of that delta, the end of the Mississippi, the bird foot delta. Yeah. We would call it, and actually, again, here we see changes in that delta. 
uh -huh. it migrates back and forth across yeah. that area. So right now it's going to be in this position, but it might rotate slightly, so some of those channels will continue to move around, which uh -huh. is kind of a problem with land down there as well. Yeah, And then the, sure. the picture on the left is actually a picture of the Nile River Delta, mm -hmm. so that's even from a little bit higher up altitude. And yeah. You can see that the area there is just lush and green where the stream channels are moving across that area out in the desert. Yeah. But the gradation of sediment from up in close to the, the main river channel out onto the delta, you're going to go from more higher velocity flows with mm -hmm. larger grain sizes. Yeah. And then as you move out onto the delta into the larger body of water, you're going to get mm. finer and finer We lose sediments. velocity. Yeah. Lose we the lose velocity more. and fire and fire sediments. Yeah, and we talked about this when we talked about environments, how the river in this situation is sorting the sediment. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Right. And really analogous situation here with an alluvial fan. So you've got a stream that's flowing out of a mountain mm -hmm. or out of a hilly area onto a flat valley. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a delta forming underwater, yeah. but this one happens to form on the land surface in the valley. Uh -huh. So the same kind of graded bedding yep. going from the stream channel out. And, and the sediment load defined. being deposited. Yep. Good. Yep. So another depositional feature. Okay. And that's, and that's it, it for that section. So you've heard a lot about depositional erosional features. We're going to do some of those in the stream tables yep. on a couple of days here. So take a look back through that. Hop on your class website, grab the quiz, and yep. we'll see you in class tomorrow. All right. See you Bye later. Guys. Bye.